Morning, Mr. Arrow. Hello and good morning, Jose. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, sir. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you. Oh, I'm blessed to speak with you because you are a pioneer. And first, before we even get started, thank you for your service to not only the Houston area, but to this nation. Well, thank you, sir. I've experienced the, the Chicano squad. I, I was blown away by, by just the camaraderie. I mean, the fact that you guys had breakfast together every single day opened up my heart to, wow, teamwork really does exist. Uh, yes, sir. We, uh, we still stick together. Uh, we work together. It's a tight, unique group, and that contributes to our success. Speaking of tight, oh my God, instantly I'm reminded of how how big your first office was. Are you kidding me? How were you supposed to work out of that office? Well, that's the uh, facilities they gave us to work because uh, apparently they didn't think we were going to do such a good job. And uh, uh, there was only five of us that were there. Um, later on, it expanded, but uh, uh, we were there to work cases. You took on something that a lot of us, we, we don't think of until the moment exists, and that is learning how to translate the different languages and, and for Houston to step up and do their job the way that they did. All of a sudden, there was a connection with the community, and you were part of that story. Yes, I feel privileged to have been bilingual and uh, privileged to have been able to help my community by using the language skills that I, uh, that I have learning how to investigate. I mean, you you had to really, I mean, because you guys were just beginners. I mean, you were just getting into the journey and all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're I guess we're going to investigate all of these mysterious murders. Yes, that's true. When we got there, they had a large number of unsolved Hispanic murders. Uh, the third day we got there, they we each assigned five murders to each of us and we went out and just started doing the work. When, when you faced the walls that you did, how did you guys find your calm? Because I understand the fact that every day you, you, you might have a moment of fear, but you can't go into fear. You've got to be able to lead in your community. How were you able to do that? Well, <laughs> police work is not easy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you make some split second decisions, but um, we had a hard working group of men that uh, I work with. Uh, I take my hats off to my partners that work with me, Ray Gonzalez, Mosqueda, Bobby Gatewood, Yupi Hernandez, Jim Montero. Um, th these guys are great. They're great partners. They all came in with the right attitude to go to work and get it done. Were you part of the production of this? Because, I mean, with, you know, the Chicano squad on A&E, the way that it's laid out is that we get to know each and every one of you on an individual basis. And I love the, the pacing and the laying out of this story. Well, like I said, each one of us got a separate story because we all work separate cases, but we, we got the job done, and I, I'm grateful for that. We're able to serve our community. You know, one of the things that kind of shocked me was was the opening scenes of it, and that was that, that it took place back in the 1970s. And it's like, oh, my God, it's taken this long to surface into our storyline? Well, uh, we have to give thanks to my son who uh, worked hard behind the scenes to get that done. And also our community that uh, recognized the good work we did. We just met with uh, Mayor John Whitmire last week, um, presented with a proclamation after 40 years of service. And also got to meet our new Houston police chief, Noe Diaz, who I think will be a fine outstanding chief for us. We, we get to meet your son inside this documentary, which I thought was very fascinating because that to me, once again, it's the camaraderie. It's the family spirit. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. Uh, like I said, I, I take my hat off to the original guys that uh, I work with. We were the original squad. We were groundbreaking. And um, it, it's great to know that the story is now being told so that our people behind us, our youth can maybe benefit from it and say, yes, we can. Here's the reason why I'm, I'm deeply affected by this story, because there, there is change in our country. We openly can speak about that. And, and the thing is, is that I have an essential job where I'm speaking with other people from other countries, learning from you guys and how you built that connection with people. It, it teaches me as an everyday person how to handle situations. Well, every every case was different. Uh, we handled each case with uh the strong desire to get it done and bring closure to the families that were affected 
Um, and not only did we work homicide, but we were there. We handled, and I feel privileged to have handled the uh, rapes, robberies, kidnappings, and all sorts of other cases in my career. And uh, the Chicano Squad fellows that I work with, we were um, pretty much lucky to have experienced all those different type of investigations we did. How were you able to get so much film on this? Because, I mean, were, were those cameras in front of you at all times? I mean, we're talking, like I said, the 1970s. I mean, it wasn't about social media at that time, but yet here's all of this footage. Yeah, well, uh, there's a lot of history there. Uh, there was a lot of media coverage back then. Uh, now and I look back and realize what a job these five original guys did because we were groundbreaking. Um, I had no idea we were going to be here this day today celebrating 45 years of uh, successful police work. Do they still have you out on a speaking tour to speak with other police forces across the nation? Yes, sir. And I feel privileged to talk to other police agencies because I see that the uh, program or the uh, group that we set up uh, it's being followed by other agencies. I'm still a police officer after 50 years, and wow. I do have contact with other agencies. And I see that the work we did is now being practiced, and it reflects back on the work that we did. How were you able to access so much information to solve these crimes uh, in, in Houston? Because, I mean, I, I love the expressions when you guys were, were, were getting answers to, to areas where people just weren't even thinking about it, but yet you guys broke through those barriers. Well, we pretty much grew up in the community. Okay. Uh, my Hispanic heritage uh, helped me a lot. I understood what the community was, and I somewhat understood the dilemma that they had and how they mistrust the police department. Do you think this documentary is going to change people? Because, I mean, it changed me, a regular everyday guy that just happens to have a radio show. This documentary is going to be a great uh, information for our community. Uh, I think it's great community service for our community mm -hmm. and they're going to see what police officers personal lives are affected by the police work that we do and how it affects our lives and and hopefully it, it'd be a positive for our community that will understand the police department a lot better you are so right about that in the way that we don't ever really get to hear the real story of the police officers and all we get is the bad news which is on the front page of the newspaper but yet this right here this this is a two-night event on a and e and it really does open up our hearts to respect as well as maybe invite people to also walk on this journey that, that you have Yes, sir. And I tell you what, I am uh, I'm really grateful to A&E for uh, presenting this our story. I am grateful for um, Mario Diaz, who was our director, Ms. De Los Santos, the producer, uh, Mr. Lawrence Biner and Mr. Kevin Brown, who did a lot of work to make this possible. One of the things that the Chicano squad faced was a corrupt police union. Now, that right there in itself would, would force people to go in their own directions or to shy away from even getting involved. But you guys were able to still get the job done. Yes, sir. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy, but we worked past it. And here we are today. Uh, it's a positive for our police department. It's a positive for all law enforcement. And that's where we're going. We're going forward. Wow. Where can somebody go to find out more about the Chicano squad? The, you guys, you guys, that's what we want to know. We want to know about you guys. Where can we go? Well, uh, you can watch the uh, premiere that's going to air uh, Labor Day at 9 o'clock a &E. And like I said, you'll be able to see more, not only the police work that we did, but you're going to see, uh, you're going to see some emotions that we faced as being police officers. It's, it's going to be good for you. You're going to understand police work a lot. Wow. more once you see this. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, sir. And I appreciate that so much, sir. And thanks for having me. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you.